And good morning, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. This is what I call my morning musings as I uh, enjoy a cup of coffee or three or four or five of a morning <laughs> and uh, kind of get my day rolling, what have you. Uh, do, do a bunch of really, really good uh, reading, research, writing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I've uh, been sharing with you some thoughts on hermeneutic, the, uh, the science of biblical interpretation. It is absolutely so critical that we properly understand how to interpret the Bible or any other piece of literature. And I've been sharing with you some of the major, major fatal flaws and inconsistencies in the futurist hermeneutic. They condemn one another. Uh, the dominionist condemns the dispensationalist for arguing from silence, and then the dominionist turns right around and argues from silence. There is another incredible inconsistency that I find in, in futurist literature. For instance, I've just been reading a book that is in many ways extremely helpful uh, by Gary DeMar, a man that I respect a great deal. And, and the book is entitled Identifying the Real Last Day Scoffers. It's a 2012 publication. I just became aware of it and ordered it immediately because I, I normally really enjoy reading Gary's material. One of the things that I have been struck with in reading this is how DeMar increasingly, or I should say just... <laughs> over and repeatedly, over and over and over, emphasizes audience relevance. He repeatedly emphasizes that we must honor the use of personal pronouns in the ancient biblical text. He emphasizes that Jesus or Paul or James or whatever, they were writing to people that they called you, and they used the personal pronouns, you and we, and they very often used the, uh, the pronouns of, of proximity uh, or the words of proximity of this generation as opposed to that generation. Well, I agree with that hermeneutic. But I would suggest to you that it's an incredibly difficult hermeneutic for them to adopt and to use and then turn around and try to maintain a futurist eschatology. Here's what I mean. DeMar, again, in this otherwise excellent little book, says we must emphasize the use of the personal pronouns. When you say, when you see the words you and we, etc., Paul speaking, Peter speaking, the New Testament writers of speaking are there of their contemporary audience, their contemporary generation. Okay. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 15 following said, Brethren, we will not all sleep. Now, was Paul writing to first century contemporary people or not? Well, of course he was. To the church of God, which is at Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 and 2. Writing to the Thessalonians. Paul, and by the way, he uses the word we a number of times in the book of Thessalonians, and invariably it's very personal of his first century generation audience, of the Thessalonians. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, twice, not just once, Paul uses the term, or he says, we who are alive. Now, it's all in the present active indicative in the Greek. We who are, not those who will be, we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. Paul very clearly expected his generation to be alive until the coming of the Lord. So my question, therefore, for you to consider is, and of course my challenge to my friend Gary DeMar would be, upon what hermeneutic do you say? Okay, in Matthew 24, Jesus spoke of you will see, you will see, you will see. And we must honor that first century generation audience relevance. But then we come to Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, where Paul doesn't, does it use the second person? He uses the first person. And says, we will not all sleep, those of us who are, who are alive. 
what is the hermeneutic for saying, oh, well, you will see means the first century generation would see an experience, but we who are alive and we will not all sleep means people 2,000 years away. You see the problem? Hey, look, this is a really, really severe problem, and I have not yet to read one single logical exegetical explanation for justifying or that can justify such a radical violation of audience relevance. Hey, I appreciate you joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. I won't be able to be with you in the morning. I'm, I've got an incredibly full day planned of research and writing and what have you in preparation for my debate with Steve Gregg. That will be in Denver, Colorado, September 6th, 7th, and 8th. Uh, the information and details, the schedule, is on my websites, www.eschatology.org, BibleProphecy.com. Go there, get the information. Hey, be there. This, this is going to be a great debate. And for those who have asked, yes, it's going to be filmed. It's going, it's going to be recorded. Yes, it will be available to you. So, thanks again for joining me. Lord willing, we'll see you next Monday. You have a great, great weekend.